This may look like another Super 73 imitation, and it is, but it's a really, really good one. Hey everyone, Micah here with Electric, and today we're reviewing the Ride One Up Rev One Electric Moped. This e-bike is incredible. It offers a ton of speed and power if you unlock it above the Class 2 settings it comes with. Come along with me and let me show you what I mean. So here's the deal. This is the full suspension version of the Ride One Up Rev One, and I'd say it arguably rivals Super 73's full suspension rides. It can't hold a candle to Super 73's culture or community, but dang if Ride One Up didn't build a seriously solid e-bike here anyways. It starts from the ground up with those CST Scout moped tires that give you sticky traction leaning into the curves. The full suspension adds to the handling, and the suspension isn't cheap junk, but rather fully adjustable. It was a bit stiff for me as a lightweight 150 pound rider, so I kept it fairly soft to account for that, but you can dial it in for your weight however you'd like. Other parts around the bike also feel like much higher quality than I was expecting. The four piston hydraulic disc brakes are punchy and the levers feel solid like motorcycle levers. The LED lighting with both high and low beams is bright to keep you noticed and it even comes with turn signals that are decently far apart in the back but I love how the front is set up motorcycle style to really be obvious. And the bike is also just a pleasure to sit on. Between the suspension and a really nicely padded bench seat, the Rev1 is super comfortable. That's a beautifully upholstered seat, it's not cheap plasticky vinyl or anything. It's a really nice fabric that feels quality, like a true motorcycle seat. And I'm loving the big battery at 52 volts and 20 amp hours for over a thousand watt hours of capacity, though it's a bit tough to pull it out with the key placement. There's also going to be a second battery option that mounts above the controller box to give you twice the range. Plus there's going to be a storage box option that can also fit in that big negative space in the frame for a bit more cargo carrying capacity. So there's a lot to take in on what at first looks like a rather simple electric moped. And not only is the bike nicely specced, but it's darn comfortable too. Now when I say it's comfortable, I mean it feels good to ride, not to pedal. Now one thing that's always fun to test with these electric mopeds is what do they like to pedal? Now can you pedal the Ride One Up Rev One? Of course. Are you going to want to? Probably not. When you pedal it, it's not a super fun experience. First of all, there's only one gear ratio. It's pretty high, so I'll give them credit for that. But your thighs are rubbing on the frame here. Your knees are up in your chin. I feel like I'm about to kick myself in the face. It's just not set up for good pedaling ergonomics, which is understandable because the bike isn't really meant to be pedaled. The pedals are largely footrests. You can do it and, you know, I'm doing it now. It's just not the most comfortable pedaling bike out there. So there, we'll ding it on the pedaling. That's its Achilles heel. But it's pretty much all positives from there on out. The bike is so solid and planted feeling that it makes me feel almost like I'm on one of my electric motorcycles, not on an e-bike. And there's a reason for that. They built this e-bike to be able to handle seriously fast speeds. Now it comes stock as a 20 mile per hour e-bike, and that keeps it legal as a class 2 electric bicycle in most of the US. And if you want to unlock it for higher speed and more power, it's not that simple. There's a bit of an unlocking procedure that involves multiple passwords and steps that the company has to walk you through. It's designed so you can't just do it yourself. You have to contact the company and it gives them one more chance to remind you that this off-road mode is for use outside of public streets and it also likely helps keep the bike legal even under stricter laws that would disqualify class 2 e-bikes that are too easily unlocked for more speed and power. And listen, if you stay in class 2 mode that is totally fine. The bike rocks and it feels great at 20 miles an hour. But if you're like me, you're gonna want more power than the stock 750 watts and more speed on top of that. And so after getting the go-ahead and the secret recipe to unlock the bike, I decided to see what this walled garden looked like. And I want to point out two things here regarding safety and responsible riding. For one, I whipped out my motorcycle gear including a full armored crash jacket, my moto helmet, leather gloves, boots, the whole nine yards. And two, I did this testing on what is known in Florida as a multi-use path. This is not a public road. It's mostly used for other vehicles, like golf carts, ATVs, alligators, and yeah, cyclists and pedestrians too. And so for safety, I called in air support and I cleared the path in both directions multiple times throughout my testing to ensure I was completely alone on the tarmac. 
so I don't want any safety officers blowing up my comment section. I did my due diligence here. And that means since I put in the time, I got to play. And boy, did I play. Now to make sure Ride One Up was honest, I used the GPS speedometer too, which seemed to corroborate the bike's speedo. While the top speed danced around a bit, I was able to maintain a pretty solid 36 miles per hour and had occasional peaks at 37, which is pretty darn good for an e-bike. And consider two other things. I was in a full upright stance, not tucked, and I also did this testing with a partially discharged battery. If you go full tuck or even have a fully charged battery, you might even eke out another couple miles per hour. For me, 37 felt plenty fast. to go that fast and to be honest like I said 20 miles per hour is still fun or you can unlock it and stick to 20 on the streets and save the higher speeds for when you're cruising private land or let's be honest plenty of people are gonna unlock the bike and use it on public roads which I'm not condoning but which I'm also not so naive to believe isn't going to happen I'm also gonna question though whether that's actually such a bad thing there are already tons of e-bikes out there that can hit fast and questionably legal or even unquestionably illegal speeds. And very few of them are built to the quality standards of this one that make it feel as solid and safe at those speeds. And of course, safety isn't just about the rider, but also those around them. And e-bikes like this should never be ridden around other cyclists at such high speeds. Stick to 20, it's plenty. And depending on conditions, you should even slow down below that in crowded cycling areas and bike lanes. But if you're on the open road and you're simply commuting to work or doing whatever you do, sharing the road and riding responsibly, well, I'm not so sure I see the harm in that. I've said before and I'll say it again, I firmly believe that if a 9,000 pound Hummer is a street legal vehicle in the US, then we've got bigger problems than worrying about a 90 pound e-bike going 30 miles an hour, and that's a hill I'm prepared to die on. This e-bike is just too good, too comfortable, too solid feeling, for me to not consider this a roadworthy vehicle at whatever speed it goes. But therein lies the beauty. If you want to go fast, have at it. If you want to keep it in class 2 20 mile per hour mode, knock your riding socks off. It's a free world and the important thing is that you're doing what makes you happy. Just try and be considerate of others while you're being happy. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed that review of the Rev 1 from Ride 1 Up. If you did, why don't you give this video a thumbs up? And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of our future electric vehicle videos. We'll see you here next time. Standing by the